To make a comic using Clip Studio Paint, launch the program and create a new file. I usually work with a width of 1600 pixels and height of 14,000, with the resolution set at 300. It can be resized to something smaller at the end of the process. You can use the Frame Border tool to add panels to your comic. I usually start by making a title page. I use the Pin tool for my sketches and line art. I'm partial to the turnip pin. Quick tip, hover over a tool to see the hotkey. I name the layer I'm working on so I can keep track of what I've done on each layer as I go. You can add panels wherever you see fit. I usually have a mental picture in my head of what I want to have happen before I start. I like to use a blue color for my sketches. I'm not doing the rough drawing yet. This is just a storyboard. I don't want anything too detailed because I might change where the panels are or decide on a different visual as I'm sketching it out. You can resize panels or change the shape while using the frame border tool. Just hold control and left click on the border. Are you still with me? I'm gonna try and pack in as much information as I can. When I'm done with the sketch, I make a new layer. What I work on next varies, but I'll do backgrounds to start this time. You can use the selection tool if you're just throwing down a color. Pick the color you want and use the fill tool for immediate results. Here, I deselect, then select to different panels. I want to throw in a bunch of different colors for my example. You can easily change up a plain background to be a bit more interesting using the gradient tool. The default setting usually puts gradients on their own layer, separate from the one you're working on. With that in mind, be sure to click back onto the background layer. If you feel confident you'll be keeping the gradients you add, you can merge them together with your background layer. You can hold the shift key or control key to select multiple layers, then right click and scroll down to merge them into one. I make a new layer for line art so I can safely draw over the background. I'm just going to make something super simple for this video so we can move quickly. I can use the eraser as I go without having to worry about my background because it's on another layer. I make a new layer for objects that are touching my line art but separate from it. You can hold the shift key to make straight lines with the pen tool. If you want to erase something, you can select it and press the delete key, or you can use the eraser tool and clean it up as you go. You can make quick and perfect shapes with the figure tool. If you select something, you'll see a menu pop up, and if you click on scale and rotate, you can right click for another menu with options like Perspective to change whatever you've selected on that layer. When I finish the line art, I go in to add color. I make a new layer and start filling things in. You can do it freestyle, you can do it with your pen tool, or you can select an area and go over it with your pen without going outside the lines, or you can use the fill tool for fast results. Just be sure to check your corners after you deselect the area. I add in a skin color on a separate layer that is placed under the color layer, so I don't have to worry about coloring over what I've already done. I keep all of my flat color layers under the line art. I'm going to make another layer for the little details, like freckles. Then I make a layer for the character's clothes. You may need more than one depending on how many colors you use and how much you want things to blend together. Here, I have something overlapping a layer. I need to delete the overlapping color, so I right click on the skin layer, I create a selection, I click on the background color layer, and press delete. We'll pretend this is the finished product. I delete the sketch layer when I'm all done with the line art. If you want to add word bubbles, CSP makes it easy. Go to the balloons tool or press the T key twice to quickly pull it up. 
Drag the new balloon layer to the top, over all the other layers. You can add a tail to make it clear which character is speaking, or you can click on the thought tail to make the character think. You can move this word bubble around by holding control, and you can change the tail's placement too. Use the text tool to add dialogue and thought to your comic. If you don't see anything appearing in the balloon, double check your text color and your layers. You may need to drag the text layer up over everything. When you're all finished making your comic, click File, Save As, and name your file. I recommend saving a Clip Studio format first. That will keep all of your layers separate so you can easily go back and make edits if you need to. After you save, you can click Save As again to save a new file. Click on the Save As type and change it to either a PNG or a JPEG. If you want to adjust the file size and crop everything yourself, you can, but I like to use this handy tool called Croppy. I select the formats I want, and I choose the file I would like to have cropped and resized to fit with those programs. If for whatever reason you can't use Croppy, you can go to Edit, Change Image Resolution, Webtoon currently accepts 800 pixels wide and 1000 pixels high, and Tapas accepts 940 pixels wide with any height. I hope this video is a big help to you, and you can watch our other videos to learn what you need to know before you post your comic.